people were mad about that so that was yeah. just the, those two things yeah that was another weird thing and he pretended that they sold a lot of tickets and they didn't and he basically lied about it and he also cut down a thousand trees down on Il Santalan, which uh, that's the thing that made me quite angry. Anyway, so I got elected and then, yeah, I was mayor. So, and now I'm going to do it again. So, I, how, how, okay, like, what, what is it like to become a mayor? Like, out of just, was it like a huge transition? Oh, yeah. I mean, the learning curve is so steep. Like it's, I would say this is one of the biggest challenges uh, of my life, for sure. There was so much to learn. And as you know, the city is so complicated. And I still, um, I'm still trying to figure out how the budget works, you know, how they distribute money among the boroughs. Um, I'm sure there must be a formula somewhere locked in a safe i don't know but uh you know it's just um anyway but it i, I say it's really difficult but or, or challenging for sure but i really like it and the thing that i like the most about it is listening to people meeting people like now we're doing door to door for the election and i just find i find people fascinated and every single door is different like it's it's a person with a whole life story who has come from you know a different country or was born here or whatever but it's just uh it's so multicultural and uh like tonight i met people from who had come from vietnam sri lanka india the philippines and that was just in one block you know so I love that about it. And I love to try to help people and to try to solve their problems and figure out how we can create a better community for everyone. Definitely appreciate that. So how, so we basically end up in a situation that is definitely well documented at this point. Um, and now you're in charge of the courage, courage party. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess when it comes down to that, we're at the point where it looks like a lot of names on a list. And I'm not going to mm -hmm. lie. Everybody I've talked to has talked about making parks better. It seems to be like everyone is <laughs> going to get elected and work on parks and green spaces. So I guess how do we differentiate between all of these parties right. as people? Like what is the difference between a courage a Projet Montréal and a Movement Montréal, which fundamentally, if you were to ask me, are all kind of in the same realms of politics, being all the same, like, sphere of stuff. And then there's mm -hmm. the other groups well, that I don't know about, so they're probably not my people. <laughs> That's how I... Well, I think you have to look at... Um, I think you have to look at experience, too. I think some of the... the you know, like I, my hat's off to everyone who puts their self out there to run for politics. It's not easy. And you've seen like what we experience on uh, social media. It's, uh, it's like we're not humans, like people have the right to say whatever they want to us. And uh, so that can be really tough. You have to have a thick skin. But I think what differentiates my part, there's two things that makes us different uh, from the others. One is that each of my candidates has um, roots in the uh, in the borough. Like they were born, either born and raised here or they've raised their families here. Like I wasn't born and raised here, but I've been here for over 20 years. I raised both my kids here. Um, and so all my candidates are, are very, very uh, connected to the community. And that's not the case for the other parties. And also my party is just for Cote d'Neige and DG. So what I what I discovered when I was part of a big party like Projet Montréal, I found that I had to vote with, which, whichever way the party was voting, even if I didn't agree with it. And I was quite uncomfortable with that. So I find that if we just have a strong council made up of my candidates or my people that are running for me, we would we would have um, a strong united front uh, 
to, to fight downtown for what our borough deserves. We are the lowest, uh, we are at the bottom of the barrel when it comes to how much money we get from the city. And, you know, I was in Projet Montréal and it didn't make any difference. Like I was with the administration and they did, still didn't give us uh, our, our just uh, part of the budget. So this way, if we all win, we will have six votes down at city council and we can say to the others, like, look, you want our votes on this? What are you going to give Cote Neige and DG? Whereas if it's Projet or Ensemble, they have to vote according to the party downtown. And I, I really think that this is the way politics should go in Montreal because um, I think each borough is very, very different. Each of the 19 boroughs, it's very different demographically, socioeconomically, like look at Outremont compared to our borough, you know, like Outremont is tiny. I think it's like 7,000 people or something. We're 165,000. Outremont is like a whole borough by itself? Yes. Yes. You don't really think about this a lot, unless you're the mayor. <laughs> No, no, no. It's uh, there's so many things that I find uh, odd about this city, and uh, that I would like to change. Um, so, you know, so I'm going to start with our borough and see what I can do here uh, to fix things and to change things. So, in theory, a party across Montreal doesn't make a lot of sense. No, like even the party system at the municipal level makes no sense. They don't have it in Toronto. And what you do is you build alliances with other other uh, councillors and say, if you help me get this done, like let's say I could work with the councillors in Park X because we have a lot in common, right? Park X and our borough, they have a lot of immigrants. Uh, and let's say we wanted to work together um, against police profiling or something, uh, like racial profiling in the police department. That's something we would have in common and then we could build an alliance together to do it, you know, to get that done at city, at the city level. But when you're, when you're bound by the party in power, like whether it's Projet Montréal or Ensemble Montréal or Mouvement Montréal, um, you have to vote along party lines and then you know so it's really like that like that like i guess like it's kind yeah, of yeah it is that's like and i mean i remember the one island one city stuff i was not old enough yeah. to vote yet but i remember we were in Cote st luke which i think stayed independent and didn't. yeah it stayed independent we're basically surrounded by the independents us right we've got westmount we've got montreal west Cote st luke hampstead and TMR. Right. And these guys are not so then so within Montreal you have the city proper of which yeah. all of this election impacts the city proper. And te right. technically Cote Saint Luke would have a separate thing that's its own thing that's not connected to the bigger city. Right. They will have elections too, but they'll only elect their council. Like only people from Cote Saint Luke will vote for people representatives in Cote Saint Luke. And they don't sit on the city council uh, downtown, the Montreal council. So they just have to, in addition to that, politic with the politicians downtown and try to figure out. Yeah, stuff. they sit on what's called the agglomeration, <laughs> which is the council for all the people who aren't part of Montreal. So you can see how things don't get done, right? That may be one of the most concise explanations for how things might be more complicated than it would appear yeah. at like, cause the one sense I got talking to candidates is there's very little anybody can do. <laughs> like, I, I, I mean, I, I wasn't well, expecting it to like turn out like that, but I'll ask questions and I listen to what everyone says and I'm like, okay, I'm listening to what everyone's saying, but it seems like there's a lot of issues. And at the end of the day, NDG is in a very bizarre position. Cause I mean, nobody, um, Nobody has really said it, but yo, let's be real. It's English in a French city. And that's, that's the fact. And a lot of immigrants. That part too. And a lot of immigrants. Yeah. Right. But, but, but what, that's what my entire, um, you know, court 
thing is about it's it started off because I stand up for what is right I always have and I always will like even though it's hard and people uh you know it's been a very stressful couple of years but I defended my chief of staff because I was being asked to fire her without proof like she's accused of psychological harassment by a very senior white male uh and she's like in her 20s and apparently and only been on the job for three months. So there was no proof. I was never shown any evidence. And uh, so I refused to fire her. And that's why the mayor kicked me out of her party. But I don't regret it because I, I, we found out since that there was no proof of psychological harassment. But the bigger picture of all of this is it's a question of democracy. It's who's in charge. Is it the is it the elected officials, or is it the bureaucrats, the civil servants? And it it's it's the answer is the elected officials because we are elected by you, the people, and we are accountable to you, the people. And when you tell us you would like something done, uh, as elected officials, it's our responsibility to give that directive to the civil servants to say, we would like, for example, um, you know, a thousand trees planted. And it's, they, they are supposed to do that. But unfortunately, uh, that's not what's happening. Um, you know, I get the feeling the elected officials are kind of looked at as Ugh. they'll be here for four years and then we'll have someone else come through. We don't really have to do what they say. But that's what my entire court uh, thing is about. It's like, who's in charge? And, uh, you know, if the civil servants, if we want civil servants to be in charge, then let's be honest and say, okay, fine, they're in charge. Why have elected officials? Well, the reason we have elected officials is because we live in a democracy. Those are really big issues you're saying. Like I, I, I'm hearing everything you're saying, and I'm going, "Damn, Montreal is kind of everything they say it is a little bit." Not to say it's like yep. fully like that, but damn, that's. I mean, I'm not. But see, and that's why I named my party Courage because I'm the only one, the only elected official, and there was another one from Proje Montreal who quit because of the way I was treated, but I'm the only one who has stood up and said. This is what's happening in this city. Mm -hmm.